Adam, we saw some pretty decent numbers from Nomura earlier. How are things stacking up for these other two banks? I think with the, for the three mega banks that we heard from yesterday, Paul, the, the key takeaway really is that Mitsubishi UFJ was was the standout in terms of the profit beat. It was a really big number, and a, a lot of it was down to, if you remember back to the financial crisis 2008 when they originally took that stake in, in Morgan Stanley, a lot of that is is, is really starting to uh, you know increase in, in the emphasis in this quarter. So that, that Morgan Stanley stake pretty much accounted for, for 30% percent of the, the income that that company has generated across nine months. So it, it, it was a, a real big drive of that of that um, profit beat yesterday. But also, you know, these big themes that we've been hearing about were pretty clear for MUFG as well. And they are, you know, essentially less of that of that pandemic buffer, less of those provisions that banks have needed to hold uh, just in case something goes wrong. Um, that's that's kind of less of a, an emphasis now at, at, at MUFG. But also, um, you know, the stock-related gains that's just continuing to help it. So uh, over at SMFG, things were not just as good, but it was still a decent beat on the earnings number. And then at Mizuho, um, you know, that was a that was a little bit poorer. They they fared a little bit worse. So um, it, it, it's been a, a pretty strong nine months now. If you take take that period and include you know this quarter, so it leaves MUFG with a really good standing going into meeting their full-year target for the year. They're, they've already surpassed what they're expected to make for the year just in the first nine months. But the caveat there being that they don't quite want to just increase that forecast just yet because they want to keep enough uh, in, in that pandemic buffer, those, those provisions against something going wrong further on in, in the year as mm. the pandemic continues to unfold. So there's still caution around uh, what they do uh, with you know, pandemic provisions. How are we expecting their stocks to react? Are we going to see some upside given this whole rotation to value that we've seen recently? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, there may still be some room for that, Sherry, but I think the point being that expectations have run pretty high. Um, if you look at MUFG, for example, you know, the stock's up 45% in the past 12 months. And, and, and you've got to think that, um, you know, how much can they keep beating these, these very lofty expectations? I think clearly that bank relative to the other two is a is a clear leader in, in a success story at the moment uh, but people still as you as you say and it points to the value trade people are looking still for for real undervaluations in, in financials across the world now and, and banks in particularly as we go into the kind of the higher rate uh, interest rate environment throughout the course of 2022 will be looking for those laggards those underperformers uh, that haven't done so well in the past 12 months that may be where you can really find some value still and of course many of the, the Japanese lenders are in that category